That's great. Uh, okay, uh, how many of you heard about this thing? Raise hands. Okay, cool. And who works with it? And who likes it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, I can do about four years being then. Uh, okay, let me start with the story. So, uh, actually, uh, several years ago, I wanted to create my first blog, and I was looking for some technologies which I should use. So, I was thinking, okay, I'm a developer, I should write everything myself from scratch. And it didn't end that way. Uh, I then ended up with WordPress because it's like um, very easy to start your site with WordPress. Right? It takes five minutes to do so. Then you take some uh, time tinkering, and everything is awesome. Or is it? Uh, how many of you know this tool? Do you know it? No? Okay, also cool. So uh, you use Chrome and Chrome Developer Tools? Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. So, so I just, just see. Sir? You told me earlier I just about Google like out here. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Basically, uh, these days, Linux is kind of integrated in uh, Chrome Developer Tools, so if you have like, those tabs there, like a console, network, stuff like that, there is a new tab which is called Audit, and it, it integrates this Linux tool. And what it does, it kind of uh, scans your site for various issues, right? So it's kind of like Audit tool. So it, it checks basically performance, or CEO practices, or some best practices, uh, stuff like that. And after it's done, it kind of generates you nice reports when you are scored uh, in each of those categories, like on scale 0 to 100. So, somebody who worked with WordPress, so what do you think that was the... I mean, after I discovered the tool, I was like, okay, I should try and run it on my blog, which was on WordPress. Uh, so, what do you think was the score in performance, like 0 to 100? Question well, 2. 22? 42. 42. Mm -hmm. Okay. 13. 13. That's pessimistic. Right. 20. 20. 20. You we were almost right. Uh, so those were the results. So you can see that uh, SEO, like you know, search engine optimization uh, for uh, like uh, Google and stuff like that, it, it's pretty good. It's 90, not 100, but quite good. Accessibility, that means like for people who have like visual impairments or something like that. Also quite good. Best practices, well, WordPress probably doesn't fall best practices that much, it, but it's still kind of uh, orange, quite good. But you can see performance is it's pretty bad, it's like 26. And progressive web apps, are you familiar with that? No? So maybe uh, I will mention that a bit later, but uh, you can see that also the score is, is pretty bad. And what's interesting is here. Uh, this is basically like timeline uh, based on time how the page is loading, and uh, this is on some like uh, simulated low-end mobile device with some uh, 3G or so, so some bad connectivity. And uh, usually, a lot of people actually work on such kind of devices, right? I mean, I don't know you have probably something like 100 megabytes internet or something like that. But for example, on this blog, half of the users were from India with, with some. Fifty dollars smartphone and like really bad connected. So on such kind of device, it can take like eighteen seconds to load the whole page, right? That's, that's crazy. Like nobody will wait eighteen seconds for the page to load. It's like you, you will leave after I don't know, ten seconds or five if you are angry. So that, that, that doesn't really work. Uh, and uh, here, uh, this is like uh, something which uh, Lighthouse uh, generates as well. So this is. Um, you can actually tell how much of the site uh, that person can see uh, while it's still loading. So you can see that there is still uh, there is already something, but like for the page to be fully interactive, it really takes quite long. Uh, why is it so slow? Well, if you remember the old days of web, it was just like static sites, right? Nothing fancy. It was like HTML and JavaScript and CSS. Usually all in one file or something, but uh, okay. it, it was static, right? There, there was no dynamic content, right? You just write your page in Comic Sans, and that was pretty much it back then. And it was fast because it's just serving files. There, there is no work. Uh, 
Uh, if you have something like WordPress or traditional like uh, dynamic sites, this is slightly more complicated because uh, now there is need for dynamic content, right? If you have, for example, a blog post, it needs to have some comments underneath. So we need to like have, have this dynamic because it can change all the time. Or you can have some other dynamic data which, uh, which really means that you cannot have static pages anymore like in the old days. So what happens is usually you have some kind of database, right? Like, uh, uh, like in WordPress, you have a database and you store your articles there and all the information about them, all the metadata. And then you have some uh, server which actually looks into the data database, kind of takes all the data, crunches it, and dynamically creates HTML page for you, right? So the, the, the file is not actually stored on the server, but it's created on the file dynamically. But it takes some uh, time to actually assemble the page, uh, you know, uh, look into the database. It's like way, way slower than uh, this original approach. So is there something we can do about that uh, in the modern days? So the answer is actually James Deck Architecture, hopefully. Uh, so the acronym, it means Java, uh, JavaScript, API, and Markup. So basically, uh, in a nutshell, it means that what we are trying to do is generate static pages, like, like in the older days, like that you can serve only files, no, no dynamic crunching of data and dynamic creating of, um, of pages because it's way too slow. And uh, like, are you familiar with uh, single page applications? Yeah, so, so basically uh, this is kind of similar, like you load the static site from the server, no moving parts, and then you have some, like, some API which like, uh, you can imagine something like aging calls, uh, which can load some dynamic parts of the site, right? Uh, but, but the key part is actually that uh, you are still striving to static pages. So no database, no application server, nothing like PHP on the uh, server side or Java or whatever. So it, it's not any like specific technology or framework. Uh, it, it's basically like just some architecture pattern which is basically uh, describing how the sites are created and deployed. Uh, are you familiar with Markdown files? Those are the files, for example, on GitHub. If you have GitHub, those readme files are always in like .me for month, right? So this is some way to actually um, create a some rich formatted text, right? But not, not as HTML in some simple formatting. So, for example, this is like level two uh, heading instead of having some H2 tags and stuff like that. So, so this is how you can uh, describe your static page and in, in some simple formatting, which even like uh, non technical people can do. And then you can actually convert it automatically to HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, right? Like static site. And you need some tool for that, right? The, there, there is some. I'm saying right off a lot, right? Uh, <laughs> so, what happens? You need some uh, tool which converts uh, this uh, markdown files or any other source of data into static pages, and that's all static site, static site generators. We'll uh, come to that. But static site generators are basically like the backbone of uh, James Tech architecture. Does it make sense so far? At least a bit. Okay, so. You start with something like this. Uh, also, what's interesting here, uh, this is actually the source code of, the, uh, of my blog. And you can see that uh, all the articles here are actually st uh, stored as a part of the project. That means like in the, in the Git repository, I have some like index file here, which is like markdown, and some images, uh, images uh, to the article. And uh, here on top, you have also some metadata describing the post, something like which categories it belongs to, like title, stuff like that. And uh, so you take those marketing files, which are like part of your project, and you generate a static site from that, something like that, right? So pretty cool, I have a static, file, a static site, which basically can be served pretty quickly, no database, no development, uh, no application server. Uh, is it fully static though, this, this site? Well, what's not static? Discuss. Discuss? Yeah. This is a post, for example. Oh my Sorry? Similar post can, can be changed, for example. Yeah, this is, this is actually generated statically. 
but uh, you're right, it can be like uh, dynamically generated, but uh, this is study part of the page. So, so this is definitely dynamic, right? I cannot have like static discussions because if somebody puts new comments there, the page would uh, need to change. Anything else? Search. Yes, you're absolutely correct. So this is basically the aim in the gem stack. This is API. This is how you get some dynamic parts of the uh, of the site. So, so, so this is nothing more than uh, like plain JavaScript. There is no server, and this API is basically a third-party API. So I don't need to worry about any backends. I need to manage some machines, uh, some servers, databases. Everything is provided by some third-party API, right? Uh, so to get into some more detail about uh, the workflow, so I already mentioned this uh, like this part. So you, you have some like uh, IDE in your IDE in your project. You have all the articles already. So nothing is in the database, and then you work with some version control system, something like it. Your format probably it's right. And uh, so let's say I create some new article or edit some new edit some existing article in uh, Markdown. And uh, the markdown file is then pushed to Git. There is a new change. And what Git does is can detect this change. It's see there, there, are, there are some new commits, and it can trigger some actions. And one of the actions which uh, can be triggered is like launching the static set generator. So you can uh, now see, OK, there is a new article. I will run the static set generator and recompile the whole thing into static pages. And it can happen automatically. Like it's kind of continuous integrity. Deployment ish. It's like uh, whenever you make changes in your code, it can be automatically uh, rebuilt and deployed. That's actually this last part that after you generate your static site, what you can do is you can trigger deployment of your static files. So, usually in like traditional applications, like uh, you don't have such a continuous model, right? Like you uh, compile your code and create some like artifacts, some executable, and then you need to deploy it to some application server and maybe do some database migration stuff, stuff, stuff like that. But here, basically, uh, here at 12 o'clock, you uh, make some changes, push them to Git, and one minute later, you have everything like up and running in production. And all this happens basically automatically, right? So, so good. Uh, right. So, if we compare it with uh, the model we saw so far, so we saw this old school, old school approach with just plain static sites, right? And we saw like traditional WordPress stuff, heavyweight database, application server, web server, lots of moving parts, very slow. And then basically, this uh, modern uh, part. This is also same for like single page applications, right? You have like uh, some client, just static files. No, no moving parts, and you download your study files for some server. This is usually like CDN. Are you familiar with that? It's like, I will show you later, but it, it's like content delivery network. It's like a way to deploy your files. And then, basically, the dynamic parts you load from, from your API. So, there's nothing like that. Everything is basically like uh, fully, fully stuff. Right, so I mentioned CDN before, and uh, so, so let's uh, look uh, a bit deeper in how uh, like deployment works. So if I have WordPress, for example, it's something like this. Like I have some WordPress instance running, maybe it's running in Germany, and I have some users connecting to that instance. And those users can be all over the world. Like they are not necessarily in Germany. If they are in Germany, it's nice. Like the distance is really short and. Uh, it's pretty fast. But what about if they are in Tokyo? Eh, not so much. And what happens if you have this one WordPress instance and now it's sudden peak of traffic? Like, it's, I don't know, you have like chocolates and now it's St. Valentine's Day or something. Like, there is a huge number of visitors speaking and your site goes down because it's not going to uh, withstand such a lot. And you're screwed, right? Because you have just one. So, Nobody is buying quantized stage chocolate and you're missing a lot of opportunities. So, of course, you can kind of scale, scale this to have like multiple machines, right? But uh, it's much trickier to scale uh, such thing because you have to also uh, have like multiple machines with multiple application servers 
database scaling is usually the good like it's the hard one to actually scale, scale the database for a lot of user services. So this is a very uh, sustainable model for something more serious. So uh, what you can do is uh, use a CDN, which is what's critical is that a CDN can only work with like static files, right? That's why having static files is really powerful. Uh, because if you have like dynamic content, you cannot really use this model. But if you can, uh, if you can have static files, you can upload it to your CDN, and then it gets redistributed, redistributed to like a lot of nodes. There can be like dozens or hundreds of those nodes, and they are kind of separated uh, geographically. So one can be in I don't know, like different states in North America, here, here, and if user connects, they can connect to the nearest node to them. So everything should be pretty fast. And if this go, this node goes down, what what I can do? I, I can basically go and connect to the nearest one, right? So like it's really resilient. Like failure of one node, it doesn't really mean anything. And uh, since like uh, everything is static, the files don't change. It's really easy to just distribute everything and keep it synchronized. Because like with dynamic data, it's really difficult to keep uh, in sync like various sources of dynamic data. So that's why uh, having static sites is uh, so powerful. And it's also way cheaper uh, to do such thing uh, than if you have like, a lot of machines with databases and application servers. So hosting static files, which are usually small, like or HTML, isn't that big, right? Otherwise, you would make it just a So that's way, way cheaper to actually run this kind of thing. Uh, does it make sense, the deployment thing? So, so this is not necessarily related to Gemstack, but for any static content. So usually if you use something like, I don't know, you want to use Bootstrap in your project, you usually include it from some URL which points to some CDN. Right? You maybe saw in the URL something like CDN or Bootstrap. Uh, great, so if I basically sum it up, like what's great about uh, this architecture that it's really fast because uh, everything is just static, you don't need to uh, assemble anything dynamically, access the database, anything is basically as simple as sending a file to a client. It cannot get faster than that. And uh, since the files don't change, you can cache everything, right? Like the browser caching is very powerful, so we can see it. Uh, it's really secure. Uh, any of you who uh, run WordPress, do you have some security issues? Like, usually what happens, like, WordPress runs like really be part of the internet, right? And if you don't keep it up to date, then uh, there are some security vulnerabilities which can be like exploited and you can be very easily hacked and lose everything. So if you bring like new instance, like in five minutes after running fresh instance, there is already like dozens of automated attacks on WordPress. And there is a lot of moving part of WordPress because there is database and application server, so you can do a lot of damage. But with this, there are no moving parts. Like, uh, you, you cannot like hack anything, right? There is just like static files being deployed somewhere. But if you gain access to the machine, like to the files, you are screwed anyway. Like it's as secure as it gets. Yeah, it's easy to scale, cheap, and what's really nice. I don't know if you worked with WordPress and you had to version something. Uh, like versioning stuff in database, it's quite hard. Like there are some plugins for it in WordPress. But uh, generally, like it is really powerful to see the history, all the changes. You have everything; it's really transparent. You can do rollbacks, you can do branching, even like pull requests for some function to, to be like merged on approval. So it's really powerful. So what are the scores now with Lighthouse? What would you expect? Like we had like performance twenty six, eighteen, or eighteen. Okay. Any bolder guesses? Forty-two. <laughs> Twenty-two. Forty-two. It, it can only be forty-two. It can only be forty-two. Yeah, One hundred. It, it depends uh, where you are located and where you serve. Okay. okay, that's a good point actually. But it's on CD and right, so yes. But uh, where you you have to distribute the servers? Yeah, it's the CDN, uh, the nodes are located all over okay. the world. Okay. So, maybe like, I don't know, maybe Germany can be close to And he was using uh, 3G? 
yes, yes. The, the same as uh, like mobile devices. Okay, okay. So, how is this what was 80? Or something? 90. So, <laughs> yeah, basically, I mean, I, th there's some like, uh, I think, image processing tweeting which could give me 100 but I didn't really find time to do that. But you, you can go basically all 100, so it's pretty great. And if you remember here, uh, it was like, what, 18 seconds? And now it's 3 seconds, even on $50 junk smartphone, mm -hmm. right? And what you can see, what was really great is, uh, here you can see that under a second, there's already pretty much everything here. Like you can already see the whole page. Like it doesn't get much better here. Like you you already know that something is happening. And the page is pretty much loaded. So uh, it, the page might not be fully interactive yet, but under a second you can see everything. Yeah. So that's good, right? Like the difference twenty six versus like that. Uh, right. So how could you start with that? So. Uh, but by the way, it's uh, really great for content like uh, if you want to have some blog or uh, maybe some news site or stuff like that, like static sites or company site which isn't really like uh, that much uh, dynamic. But there are even like plugins for static sites for like uh, like API for shopping eShops. So you can do even like static eShop like that just just using some API. Uh, so first thing which you need. Uh, when you get started with JSTAG is what? ID, okay. And then maybe who was like the part which kind of compiles everything? That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, like there is this site uh, static gen which basically lists like various different uh, static generators. So you have like really nice uh, statistic uh, here so, like GitHub stars, or GitHub Forms, Twitter Flowers. Uh, what's also interesting, like uh, each different uh, static site generator is in different technology, right? So for example, if you have Gatsby here, it's in the React. And if you are familiar with React, you are more likely to choose Gatsby because you can easily like modify it, extend it, because you will be writing in React. If you are writing in Go, then maybe you will be a better choice. Uh, for example, JPL is quite popular if you heard about that. If you know GitHub pages, yeah. Uh, it runs on JPL. So that's in Ruby if, if I'm correct. So uh, th this is a nice place to go to check what's your, what, what is something which is like popular yet in your uh, kind of technology. Uh, I'm accepting more wild guesses. How many generators do you think there are on this site? Twenty? Um. Everyone misses. 42. Yeah. 42? Yeah. <laughs> so, you, you're not right again. Too high. <laughs> so, uh, I didn't count them, but I think it's like. It's around 42. <laughs> <laughs> it's like hundreds. Of it's, it's like, uh, yeah. So, same with like JavaScript frameworks, there's a lot of, lot of, lot of, lot of them. So it's usually best to uh, go with something which is like a lot of popularity. So if you can see something with like one GitHub star, it's probably something which you would like to bet on in a long time. So the community probably won't be that good. Uh, right. So, uh, so if you know WordPress, which it actually does uh, two things. Like the main or a really important part is actually like serving the pages uh, to your clients, like you know, assembling the HTML and sending it to them. But it's, it is actually like a content management system. Uh, are you familiar with that? Yeah. So it basically is, is some software which lets you create like articles, pages, stuff like that. So it's something like a specific editor where you will create new blog posts with like title and you start typing right and then you click publish and it's, it's on the internet. Uh, so, in this approach, we didn't really have uh, any of this content management, right? We only had like uh, creating stuff in my IDE, which I mean, it can feel, feel cool to write everything in your IDE, but for somebody who is non technical, it's kind of a breaker, right? It's like a big barrier of entry. And 
that, that's one of the things that uh, is like the biggest maybe strength and the weakness of uh, WordPress as well, that it kind of integrates those two parts. It serves content and it also manages content. And it's, it's a great experience to create content in WordPress. It's, it's not necessarily a great experience to be served with WordPress like regarding performance. So it kind of maybe makes uh, sense to kind of split those two concerns and have like uh, content management separately and serving separately. So here, uh, if you work with Gymstack, uh, this is the same old diagram from before, and we can just like add content management system on top of Git. So you, are, you still have your like specific editor, and if you change something and click publish, you just make changes to your Git repository. And you can still have like your uh, nice workflow of WordPress, where you have like some approvers of articles. How can you do that? If you have Git. Request. Yes, of course. You, you can create pull requests, and uh, if the pull requests are approved, then it's basically like approved out. So, again, there is this nice space which uh, has lots of uh, different services. There's not <laughs> quite many as uh, like static search generators, but it's a good place to start. Like, how does CMS not work? Okay, so now we have static search generator and uh, CMS. So, you're kind of almost good to go. Uh, what about some content? Like, uh, you remember those comments like discussed, right? We saw that it's not really static content. It's, it's by nature dynamic. You know, like, people are uh, like, submitting more and more comments, and the page needs to change to reflect this. So, is there any way this could be actually static? Like, I could make those comments static? Do you have some idea how to achieve that? Like to, to get rid of the API, API call at all and just have like static comments, which are part of the page already. And then they're the next time as well. Sir? They must be there the next time as well. They don't disappear. Right. Yes, they, they must be part of the page, which means uh, imagine you have this comment system, right, with comments, and you have uh, some form which submits like uh, your name, email, maybe, and some comment text. And what you can do, you can link it to, to, uh, to a tool which is called uh, Static Map here. And it can connect to your Git repository, and it can, like, you still don't uh, need to have any backend server. Uh, you just have static sites, but you work with Static Map, you submit your form with your comments to Static Map. And under the rules, Static Map can connect to your Git repository and actually, like, push that comment as a part of your code. And then everything gets uh, rebuilt in two minutes and the comment is part of your page forever. And everything is static, no, no API calls. So you can get that, does it make sense? Yeah. Uh, sorry? Slow? Yes, I just create a comment and I will see it on the side. Yeah. It, it might be slow in some cases, but uh, Maybe in some cases it doesn't matter. I don't know if you have like uh, like a review of your like user reviews of some I don't know movies. It doesn't really matter if it's there like in seconds or in a minute. It, it's up to you. You can still use API if you want to. Yeah. This is like fully static uh, alternative. I have a question. It's compile how far as far as I understand should compile, right? It's compiled. Uh, when it is committing the changes in, into the git. Mm -hmm. After that, it should build, right? Yeah, basically, this uh, oops, that this is whole workflow uh, kind of happens. But instead of you pushing uh, yeah. like from your IDE to Git, it's like static meant pushing to Git uh, instead of you. Then the build is triggered and everything is kind of different again. Uh, uh, and my question was, it build fully application? Oh, uh, the static site generators uh, work in a different way. Some of them might be like less optimized, uh, that they need to rebuild everything from scratch. But usually what happens, they can uh, uh, cache the previous build, so they only rebuild the delta, the changes. Yeah. So then it's like way, even way faster, so it shouldn't even take like uh, two yeah. minutes or so. So uh, just a Small mm -hmm. fragment of text. Yeah. Uh, cool. Uh, also, speaking of search, there is this uh, nice service called Algolia, which is basically a search as a service. So, if you're familiar with it, and then pro 
provide uh, like search results to API. And you still don't need any backend to do the searching. It, it knows everything about your content, and after you rebuild, it's going to re-index it. It can even do stuff like uh, going through uh, like YouTube videos and uh, like speech recognition, and then searching in like uh, spoken word in YouTube videos, stuff like, stuff like that. So it's it's pretty powerful. Uh, what about the uh, boosting platform? Like, in Solar, you have a boost words like if you want to give the on the top, if somebody just search some words, mm -hmm. and this uh, article should be on the top because this is like. Oh, so so you mean like you, you don't have like just a plain plain search, but yeah, some words it, it, this article it coefficient it should be associated with this. Yeah, because the Google yeah. relevance, you know, it should be relevant to search, not just giving. Yes, yes. Uh, this is I think this is possible. You can configure your search. I I did uh, just. The plain out of the box thing, but uh, it's kind of, it's possible to uh, configure this quite a lot, so it should be definitely possible. Uh, yeah, uh, did you hear about uh, this thing? It's me. Awesome, it's me. Um, uh, it's actually like one of the study site generators, which is very popular these days. This was it was one of the top three uh, we saw on the study site generator page with those hundreds of uh, items. And uh, it's written in React. Do you work in React, some of you? Okay. So that's good. Uh, that's good. If you work in React, then you should feel at home with uh, Gatsby. But what's difficult is that uh, if you have React application, it's like more heavyweight than playing static HTML and uh, stuff. Right? Uh, it needs to like download the JavaScript, parse it, and then build the DOM and everything. So it's like way slower than playing HTML. So uh, you can, but actually, um, yes, it does. It uh, pre-renders everything on the server side. So you have pre-rendered like plain HTML with like CSS and JavaScript, and you can download it pretty fast, right? But under the hood, uh, it uh, starts to download React and kind of uh, builds like full-fledged uh, React application under the hood, and then when it's ready, it kind of switches to static HTML for like React. And it also starts to kind of, if you have some upgrading links on your uh, page, like internal links, it can like uh, fetch the data uh, of the sites where it is leading to. So if you are clicking links in your project, it kind of, uh, the navigation is instant because the data is prefetched. So it's fast because of its uh, GenStack, but it's even faster because it preloads data like, like this. Uh, this is also interesting. Uh, how many of you mentioned that you're familiar with this? Yeah. So uh, this is uh, again like uh, some like architecture or set of principles by Google. It's not any like specific technology, but it's kind of uh, initiative to uh, bring like websites as close as possible to like native applications on mobile. So uh, for example, if you use like Gmail. You can write email and it works uh, offline, right? And when you're back online, it kind of uh, sends the email again or stuff like that. So it basically has like offline uh, support. So after the page loads, you can keep navigating and everything works offline. So that's pretty great. And you, uh, it, it behaves like uh, an app. It can run like full screen and you can pin it to your like, home screen on mobile devices. So, so, so this is pretty interesting. It was actually one of the uh, areas, if you remember, in the lighthouse, like how much the application is PWA compliant. So WordPress was, I don't know, something like that. This looks like 100. Uh, cool. So what's really interesting about this way, it has like the same uh, uh, workflow as what we already saw. So uh, what we saw, you have some markdown files, right? To put it into a static site generator, and then you have HTML and JavaScript and CSS. We, we, we saw that already. What's really interesting about Gatsby is, uh, like, instead of Margam, this can be pretty much uh, anything. So, uh, I mean, it's not so good to generate pages just from Margam. It's not so flexible or powerful. But here you can actually take Excel spreadsheet and generate page or part of page depending on that. Or you can connect to like REST API and generate page based on that. Or even you can connect to existing WordPress. And generate like static site from that. So that's really powerful that you can use. For example, if you have users who are used to 
work in WordPress, right? It's pretty nice, like content management system. You can connect your Gatsby to WordPress and then have like uh, you know static site, uh, or even like menu or uh, other other sources. And uh, how many of you do you know GraphQL? Okay. So basically, are you probably familiar with REST, right? Uh, so uh, GraphQL is like another approach to API. So uh, do, do you work with database, you know, like uh, SQL, for example? So this is something similar. It's like querying language for API. You basically, in the rest, you just get all the persons, maybe. And here you can say, give me all the persons, but only their first name, last name, and age, and order them by age, and give me only first 50. Stuff, stuff like that. It's really powerful, like API. And uh, it's like a really modern thing, and what uh, like PSP uses, it uh, uses like GraphQL to connect uh, in a uniform way to all of those data sources. So it's pretty interesting. But ultimately, in the end, it's just HTML CSS and some React. Right, we are getting to the end, so there will be no more guessing, so we cannot really use your fortitude again. But, um, I show you like the hard way to get into GenStack, like the site with hundreds of static site generators, right? Content management systems, and then we, we didn't really cover deployment, but that's another part which is kind of maybe difficult. But uh, so one kind of disadvantage of GenStack is that it has like a high barrier of entry, right? You need to find all the pieces, put them together, make sure your CMS works with your static site generator and team, stuff like that. It, it, it can be really hard at the beginning. So uh, there is this cool uh, tool uh, called Stackbit. And what it does is like a simple wizard which can generate uh, GenStack site for you. So it, you, you just select in the first set like what should be the visuals and structure, like a theme, like in a WordPress if you have theme, something like that. Uh, there, there are a lot of predefined themes that you can import your own. Then you can basically say, okay, give me some static site generators, whatever it is. Then uh, some content management system for editing the content. And then just like uh, how it should connect to your GitHub. And some CDN, which it should be able to do. And that's pretty much it. You have like four clicks, and you have like GenStack site up and running, which is accessible to users. And it has already this continuous uh, deployment in place. That means that if you make changes, in your CMS or in your IDE, it will be again rebuilt and rebuilt. Everything works, everything is connected. So this is a great way to start with, uh, with GenStack. And also like uh, Gatsby is interesting uh, static site generator. But ultimately it have, uh, it depends more on which technology you are familiar with. So if it's not React, if it's Go, then it's something which is similar. Alright. That would be all for me. Uh, there are more resources. So what's interesting is uh, there is a podcast called James Tech Radio. So interesting episodes from different people working on different projects uh, from James Tech. Also, this Netlify is a CDN where you can deploy your stuff. So we didn't really cover deployment, but uh, Netlify is really a great service for that. Uh, yeah, and there is a whole conference uh, dedicated to James Tech, so we can watch all its videos from all the presentations that are online on YouTube. And uh, this is actually the article how I migrated uh, my WordPress site to, to Gatsby and GenStack. Uh, great. Thanks for attention. Uh, do you have any questions? Yeah, let's imagine I just have a site which are selling chocolates and candies, for example. Doesn't matter. But I have a catalog of like 100 goods and some search. How can I just do it uh, just like this, like searching or grouping by some types of candies or chocolates. Okay. So you can actually use Angular for that, uh, but uh, probably you wouldn't use maybe, uh, or you, you can use like full stack search, but you can actually describe uh, maybe your pages in some like metadata, like some maybe JSON structure describing the page, uh, which can be different from uh, what's actually in your uh, in your full text. And uh, there are also like plugins uh, or APIs uh, for like eShops actually, 
so you can run your each of on a uh, static agent side. So there is only like API in which you interact. So th those individual uh, pages can still be static, but then you have some API which basically says, okay, now start or return and wait for the other. So you can build a lot of net EA additions. Or let's say if I have a greed on my... If what? Greed. Greed. Greed? Greed, yeah. Like Excel table. Table. Oh, table. great. Yeah, yeah, I see. <laughs> yeah, so sometimes I just operate it because, like, each grid in Angular, I can just have a filter, I can just uh, have some column search and uh, check some column and remove some column, and I can just uh, adjust a view by the user needs. And how can I just do it here? Mm -hmm. So, static site uh, doesn't necessarily mean that it's just like plain HTML which doesn't uh, have any user interaction. So actually the J in the gem stack means JavaScript. So uh, if you have like AG grid, it's like static JavaScript. Like you can just have that code responsible for generating the grid in your static. Uh, and static. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And if the data in the grid is static, that's even better. But if it's dynamic, you can obtain it from API. But the page itself is still like fully static. <laughs> Yes, uh, we will share that because otherwise you wouldn't be able to use those things. <laughs> right. uh, yeah, we will share the presentation and there will be even a recording for, uh, for both of the presentations. Uh, yeah. For the questions. So basically, you, uh, if you want to have like a website like WordPress site where you have articles and maybe some picture sliders or something like that. Uh, the content part uh, comes from either uh, Markdown or maybe some content from or somewhere else. Comes from API, mm -hmm. and like for example, if I want to have a slider with pictures, I would still have to write it as part of the template, which is just one of slider with pictures. Yeah, like for example, I don't know, like uh, you have a conference and you have uh, ten partners mm -hmm. in the conference, and you want to show like five partners and then just let it scroll or something. That, that's just part of the template, which you still have to have like a... Oh, you, you, you need some, some, some content which is not really like text of the article, but... Yes, yes okay. Okay. So it actually uh, works in a way that, uh, for example, uh, on that blog, mm -hmm. like, you, if you are familiar with templating, like, you have like different uh, templates. So uh, one template is like for blog post, and then you have like template which basically defines like uh, other part of the site, like uh, for example, like homepage, uh, homepage or the navigation menu oh. and stuff like that. So each can have its own template, and you can uh, also include like some HTML fragments there, or uh, in uh, in uh, I mentioned the Gatsby, right? So it would work in a way that uh, the content, uh, like articles, is actually a markdown, but those templates are React, so you can write this whole part in actually React and not markdown. And it can be anything which React application can do, right? It can be quite powerful. That's the awesome. Okay, cool. So now maybe uh, there's time to grab something to drink, have some mm -hmm. beer, and survey one uh, other question. It could be an enterprise uh, solution. Uh huh. Yeah. Like to an enterprise. Mm -hmm. it, it depends what we actually like need, right? It, if it's like some highly dynamic application where you have like uh, real time data coming from I don't know, stock trades and everything is uh, like moving, then. Uh, then I don't know, maybe uh, you can use like some regular like single page application for that. Uh, however, this is good for like um, content sites, uh, especially like you know, know like uh, magazines, news, blogs, uh, or like study page about companies. For example, like Obama's campaign uh, on that was like on James Day and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, some presentations like that. So, so it's not like a uh, tool which is best like everywhere, but for things that don't change that much, uh, 
and usually a lot of stuff doesn't actually change. 